Hey, okay, you ready to do this? Do it. Yeah, let's right. not get hit by a forklift here. Have you been in? Oh, you haven't been here. I think on, like for a while there, they're only open Monday to Friday. Oh, okay. And then it says open, yeah. But on uh, today, I think it's open till three. Uh -huh. So we'll kind of get a first-hand look at. It's it's pretty interesting. Like even just walking in. So I'm gonna let you just take it all in. Here. Take it all in. <laughs> so watch your footing here. It's uh, it's a little precarious. A little sloped. Oh, oh jeez. You get been here in the lineup? Uh, no, I've only been here when it's been sparsely popular. <laughs> so like a weekday? There's no straight lines, but it's like a building supplies yeah. <laughs> area, right? Like, uh, who's in charge of the building here? A lot. So. We're here at the Northern Cafe, Kenny, Mirror, and me. So we're going to talk a bit about running shoes. Um, Kenny's a avid runner, still going. I'm not an avid runner, I just run. Um, and we thought we'd talk a bit about all these new sort of innovations in shoe technology. Oh, what was that? Um, and, and figure out, like, is it worthwhile to invest in uh, 200 and three hundred three hundred and fifty dollar shoes, shoes. <laughs> and then you know are you using it to train are you using it to just compete um you know what are the benefits and what are the costs yeah and so you know we both work with athletes we both work with general population rehab um but we both run still so it's kind of interesting yeah and we're both older so Maybe we need some spring, so this is kind of this is kind of interesting. So yeah, so you have well, I brought three shoes with me. Might as well show them. Uh, we did Nike Vaporfly Four Percent, which I just bought this year and and have t test driven only in one race. Um, so that's this guy. Next one uh, was a shoe I used a lot last year, mainly for races five, ten k, eight k, nothing longer than that. Uh, the Mizuno Wave Sonic. Also a very light shoe. Doesn't have the same stiffness that the Vaporfly has. So like Sonic Hedgehog? Yeah, Sonic Hedgehog. Okay. I think that's why they're blue. Yeah. And then this one I picked up this year and it's the it's an Ultra Escalante version 2. Um, this one I mainly just use for training and longer runs. Um, again though, this shoe isn't even that... that what's the, what's the company? Ultra. Ultra. So you'll find a lot of um, a lot of ultra marathoners and long, long distance people wear this one. It's more of a true zero drop shoe. Very cushiony. It's quite soft. Um, the foam is quite, uh, I'll, I'll say a firmer type of foam. Like it, it's soft, but it has a decent amount of girth to the okay. to the softness of it. Relatively stable. Yeah, very, very stable shoe. It's got a wider toe box. Allows for a little more room, so if you are doing longer runs, you can a little more foot expansion, so your foot doesn't cramp up as often in the shoe. Um, but it's definitely denser and heavier. So you have three different shoes from three different companies. Is there was there a reason for that, or was it just random? Um, I choose what feels good on my foot, and I like to have a wider toe box if I'm doing training and running, um, and more of a zero drop, so that I'm using more muscle. Um, and less cushion. Um, it's harder and harder to find less and less and less cushion in shoes. So when I first started getting back into running seriously a couple years ago, I was in even less than this. Oh. Um, not true, you know, not true zeros, like zero shoes or that kind of stuff. But, you know, the New Balance had the MT10 trainers or the, the road version of them as well, which was pretty minimal. And now I went into something like this. I like a little more weight and a little bit more stability when I'm training okay. that this, this provides. And then I get more footwork out of it too because my muscles and my feet are generally having to work a little bit more with the wider toe box. They're not feeling like they're um, squished or constricted in any way. So on longer runs, I, I like it. And then when you do transfer into like a training effect, you're transferring into a lighter shoe, you feel the difference right away. You feel like even when you're warming up, you're like, wow, I feel fast. Because I assume it's kind of like a, a but, baseball player when they have a heavier bat. Thank you. Um, you need uh, chopsticks or anything? Oh, sure. I'll, I'll have chopsticks. chopsticks yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but 
But it's not like those are heavier and stiffer or whatever. But yeah, I don't for know. For that effect, it's just that's they, how. That's, yeah, that's what I like. Um, would I race? Would I race in these? Probably not. You could. You could race in them um, and do probably very well in them. That's coach, so don't put yeah, it in yeah, there. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I, I was thinking about that. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Like hold off, hold off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that'd be interesting. Like Specialty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so with these, you could race them. A lot of people do race them. But I find them just a little bit heavy, a little bit bulky for racing. Okay. Uh, Is there anybody notable who uses those shoes? Or do they have like a... I, I couldn't tell you. No, you're no. the most notable person. But there, I'm sure there's more than me, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, I'm the only one I know. I know a lot of people that do trail running run in ultras. This is a road shoe. Oh, okay. You can tell by the, the sole. It's definitely a road shoe, but a lot of trail runners. I had a friend come back from doing the, oh wow, the, the hike from basically Mexico to BC. Yeah. And he said a lot of the hikers wear ultras because they have a wider toe box. They're a little stiffer, stiffer foam or like soft foam, but stiffer. So they're, I guess, last longer. They're more durable. So they go from, from Mexico to Vancouver, from Canada? They, yeah, so Mexico to, to Canada. Does Donald Trump know about this? I know, right? I don't know. <laughs> um, I forgot what the name of the trail is, but yeah. So, but and I think that's due to the wide toe box. Okay. It just allows more foot splay. So, and but you seem the most excited about the Nike, like in terms of what the promise was and what the. I didn't buy these at full price, luckily enough. So I did get them at a little bit of a discount. Not a lot. I think they were because they're last year's model. I got them at like forty percent uh, off, which is nice because then you're not spending upwards of 350 yeah, whatever yeah. they are you're not an early adopter you know in that regard yeah and i didn't know i wanted to see what people were doing in them first and then we had people in my club that were starting to do pbs and prs into their late 30s for 10k half marathons on the road or race i was like okay well you know i had a goal set for myself that i wanted to be able to go sub 34 by the sun run of this year uh. so i'm like if this can give me an extra three to five seconds per k faster could very easily be achievable considering my last year's time was 34.54. You, you said you wore them for two races? I wore them once just on a tempo run, oh, okay. just to kind of feel it. Yeah. And that, I was skeptical after my tempo run. It didn't feel any easier, I didn't feel lighter, my time for the tempo wasn't any better. And okay. I was like, hmm, is it gonna make a difference? And then uh, we put them on, I put them on for the, an 8K race uh, just the other weekend and the whole race felt lighter. Really? Yeah. So two weeks prior, I did a 8K flat, 8K sea level race in these shoes. And there's probably a couple other variables that sure. might have been in play, right? I can't say yeah, exactly. I can't talk to you about that. Yeah. yeah. And so I ran a 2910. I was like, okay, that's usually my racing shoe. I thought I was going to be in around 2830 shape. Just didn't happen that day. And then literally two weeks later, put these guys on. Felt really weird warming up in them they feel very soft unstable unbalanced but as you start picking up your stride speed everything seems to stabilize and you can actually feel the the more rigid flex in there kind of almost propelling you forward in a way and so when i finished that i didn't look at my watch the entire race i didn't want to know what my, anything was i wanted nothing to be like mental or this or like hey i'm going fast or oh i'm going slow i finished the race in 27 47 so i took off a minute 20 so there's you know, even if I was in 28-30 shape, that's still a 30-second improvement over two weeks. Yeah. You're not going to get that. So it did make me... What, is that? what does that work out per kilometer? Like 15 seconds or...? Uh, it's about, well, the minute 20 itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, what is that, a minute... So that's 100 and... What is that, 80 seconds? Yeah. So 80 divided, so it's eight, yeah, okay. 10, seconds, 10, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 10 seconds per kilometer. Which is significant. I'd say so. When, at a race, piece, race pace, a two-week span. Yeah, yeah. And even if I was around the 28.30, that's still five seconds faster per kilometer yeah. in this shoe um, variable. So, um, so the biggest thing I found is unstable as they feel, just walking around in slow paces. Yeah, it so definitely let's changes. Eat a bit and then let's talk a bit about that. You don't, I don't want you holding the shoe the whole time. You're, you were saying, like, it's interesting. You're saying that there's like a, there's like a carbon plate in there, and it provides elasticity and stiffness. But at the same time, you're saying it was kind of soft. And can you explain that? Like, yeah. So. Initially, when you when you put on the shoe, if you're just walking around in it, it uh, I don't know. I described it as kind of like wearing a really soft running shoe on like a perfect uh, golf green, like golf greens. 
Like it's really soft and squishy, and then the shoe itself feels almost unstable. So like, just walking, you, just walking in it. I feel like, I don't. Know, but I'm used to smaller heel stacks and less cushion in my shoes in general. So for me, it was a big. Are you more of a min minimalist guy before? I'm generally more, I try and do more minimalist, just the way I adapted my running over the years. Yep. Feeling that was a really, like it almost threw me off. I was like, am I even going to like running in these? Um, and I ordered them online, so it's not like I was going to return them. I didn't get to try them on until I had them. So then weather in Vancouver kind of sucked for a while, so I didn't want to wear them out in snowy, slushy, slushy weather. And then when I took them out the first time, like I said, that as you get going, I could kind of feel it. And I was like, oh, they don't feel as unstable at a faster pace. So during my tempo, I <clears throat> kind of drop my tempo speed to like five kilometers per minute. And at about that pace, they still felt on the edge of unstable. Like I didn't feel like it was any benefit to me, really. Like it didn't feel easier. It just felt kind of sloppy. You know, and then I jumped to like a 430 pace and it felt a little smoother, more efficient. Stride length seemed to be easier. And then when I got under four, around the 3.30 pace, is probably when I started feeling the biggest benefit of the shoe. And it'd be interesting to see. Do you think that was intended? Like that they tuned that shoe to a faster pace? Maybe it's ground impact. And so the stiffness of the uh, carbon plate and the responsiveness of the foam, as it gets compressed faster, gives you more rebound. Whereas it kind of gets half compressed, it's not kind of like mm, wishy-washy. Yeah. Um, so that's something that you don't, you don't take advantage of the spring effect until it has a certain amount of force input. Well, yeah, exactly. And so it'd also be interesting to note if if you're a heel striker versus forefoot runner, would a heel striker still get the same benefit out of that shoe as say a forefoot runner because a forefoot's going to put more load into the forefoot where the, where the plate is. Where My the understanding plate. is that, that it was intended for that. Is that true from what you heard? I think so. I think so. So, does it behave like a? I have this question for Nike and maybe others, but does whatever the the um, the substance that's in the the sole, like the actual does, foam? Yeah, the foam. Does it play, behave almost like a non-Newtonian fluid? Like a, you know what I mean? Like the higher the velocity, the stiffer it gets. I think so. I, that's kind of how it feels like when you're silly putty, right? Yeah, that's kind of how it feels when you're running faster at your faster speeds. Um, like you even notice that. Let me know how hot that is. Yeah, I'm gonna let you be I'm, the I'm early adopter for the hot sauce. I, I'm risking their uh, house-made. <laughs> is it okay? I'm I'm not sure what it is exactly, but. You want I, some milk? I enjoy some kick, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, but yeah, it definitely has that feel. You go faster, it seems to firm up the shoe. And I don't know if they, the carbon plate also plays an effect in there. It, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting feel. It's different than any shoe I've ever worn, by far. Yeah, well, uh, have you heard anything about, are other companies also doing this now? Like, is it basically a space race? And like, okay. There yeah, there are, there are. Um, two other companies, I believe Brooks, is releasing one. I think ASICS might have a carbon plate already out. Okay. And New Balance probably too? Or? I don't know if New Balance is quite there yet, but I want to say Saucony has one that might be released in April. I think it's Saucony. How about, how about so the, Hoka? Oh, they're, Hoka? Known, they're known for like <clears throat> having the pillowy soft. Yeah, well, Hoka's an interesting band because they also did a, a racing flat as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Here we go. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep, I got ketchup. We're good. All right. Yeah. I mean, how you really any texture? Uh oh. I, I'm, I'm basically trying to figure out is everybody going to go this way? And then what's going to be the impact on every shoe? Like. Well, yeah, that's interesting what the double IF is recently introduced from my understanding they're allowing anything with a 40 mil drop so as long as it's less than 40 mils it's legalized it has to be out to the public for a minimum of four months so that anybody can go get the shoe 
Assuming they can afford it. Assuming they can, yeah, exactly. That's another thing. But I think if other brands start coming out with it, the cost might get driven down. Okay. Especially if you start seeing similar results with a less expensive shoe. Mm -hmm. It might start dropping it. Um, and then what was it? Oh, uh, um, maximum of one carbon plate. Now, how they're going to, what are they going to start cutting shoes open at the end of races to determine if it was a one carbon plate? I don't know That's what, awesome. they're, what they're going to do. It's like cutting your seats open at the border. Exactly. And they have full reign to destroy your $400 shoe. Like, <laughs> like they do in mining, they just do a core sample. Yeah, just go, yeah, maybe that's what they do, right? And what was interesting in the 8K race I did, there's a couple of people in the new Vapor Flies, and another guy who ran in the Vapor Fly, and one other guy in uh, 4%. That day alone, three of us had personal, rec personal bests. And wow. two of us had just worn the shoes for like the first time ever in a race. So that, that's the interesting, interesting thing to me is that at first I'm like, okay, so you're doing this for people who are in the Olympics and whatever. And I said, well, will the average consumer really care about having this juiced up shoe? And apparently they do. Like even the average person wants to run their 10K faster or whatever, show people up at the gym. I don't know. By any means necessary, right? Um, and if it comes, some people, if you have, I don't know, I, I think of it kind of as in like the, the biking community, lighter bike. That's true. Lighter this. If you, and that's Which is you, very equipment focused. Very equipment focused. And so, and there's a lot of people out there that aren't great cyclists, but they'll spend the money and be able to save 5%, 10% off the time just because they bought the $10,000 bike. Compared to somebody that might be more fit, can't afford it. Like, are we going to create an elitist running group? Like, oh, you're going to be great, but only if you can afford this dollar priced shoe. Well, at first, that whole like sub two hour marathon thing, it was kind of interesting because I'm like, okay, is this like a publicity stunt? Is this just a marketing push? And now that you kind of go back and you're like, well, yeah, like that makes perfect sense, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be no different than Honda putting a car in Formula One. We have, or even like in um, Ford versus Ferrari movie, like Ford wants to win the Le Mans. Yeah. So we're going to make a car so that people buy our cars. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. And we, look, everyone's running these records by our Nikes. Yeah. Sure. I get it. Yeah. But Nike yeah. was the instigator, was kind of the, the ones that pushed it, eh? Yeah. Well, I think they probably, in, they probably invest the most too, right? Well, this, the Olympics will be interesting. Like for those, I mean, if they're going to do it to the spikes too, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be like swimming now, right? Well, yeah, now I wonder if you're going to have... Well, I think they said there's no new rule. I don't know if this applies for spikes as well, but no uh, kind of like prototypes going to be allowed to be worn. Um, I don't know what the rules are with spikes, if it'll be the same. So they have to have that four-month... That four-month thing and available to the general public, so it can't be a special shoe for only one athlete. So they're trying to level the playing field in that sense. So if you're an athlete that's not sponsored by Nike, you can still go out and get that shoe and race in that shoe on that day, but then what does that look like for the sponsorship level? Yeah, the sponsor that you have. Like, I remember back in the day when I was still competing, people would get sponsored like, ah, oh, I don't really like this shoe. So they'd rip the stripes off yeah, and then put the stripes of whatever company. I wonder if that's going to happen. I wonder if they can do that. Well, I know that there was, like when the Ons first came out and made a big push, the On Cloud shoes, and so there were some elite runners that were getting sponsored by them, but in their uh, negotiation of sponsorship, they said, yeah, I will wear these shoes and train in these shoes and do this, but I will not race in your shoe. Oh, really? Yeah. So <clears throat> maybe that's going to be the new way they do things. Like, I love these shoes for training. I think this is the best. I love their product for their tights or for their socks or for their shirt. But for the race day, it might be different. Maybe that's how you start writing up these... That's interesting. So, yeah. I really love your product, but it's not going to help me win. Yeah. It's the athlete's livelihood, right? They want to make money off the races or Olympic trials or whatever. So they got to have all the... They don't want to feel disadvantaged compared to the next runner. That's interesting. Well, it's, it's really going to turn it into a technology battle, right? Yeah. In a way, it's always kind of been a technology battle. Oh. Whose new foam is going to be the best? Who's Nike Air Max? This is going to make you better doing this. Yeah, but those didn't actually work. No. But they finally found something that 
does. Uh -huh. And whether it's the carbon plate or the foam, or maybe it's the perfect combination. There was an article in Fast Company, the magazine, and they were talking about, which is a business magazine, and they were talking about the vapor flies and and then uh, in the running sense, but then they're also talking about basketball, like team sports, like, oh, we think that it'll make people feel fresher and more springy by the end of the game. But then I always think, well, what is the cost? What is, if, if it's making somebody springier, is it detraining qualities? Oh, yeah. Like, you, that, I mean, you, yeah. you, 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 you kind of suggested that when you're like, I would never train in these. Well, that's the same, same, yeah, that's exactly it. Is if you're constantly exposed to the same parameters and like you know the nike vaporfly i find it does help it'd be interesting to see how it changed stride length as well right because if you're still doing the same cadence same tempo with an increased stride length yeah you're going to be faster under the same that's what i wanted to ask you under the same energy level but I... no i don't want you to geek out completely but yeah. it'd be interesting to monitor in your next couple of races what is your stride frequency versus yeah because then you could calculate you could do an average on length, right? And average on length, figure it out, right? So I probably have that data actually in my watch. It keeps track of steps. Yeah, yeah. It's an approximate. It's not a true pedometer. It's on my wrist, right? But <clears throat> you guys uh, doing okay still? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. very, very good. good. Okay. And so yeah, that training effect might. I feel like it would be lost if I just trained all the time and wore that shoe all the time. Um, that's why I do like to train in a more minimalist shoe because I feel like I'm getting more response from my overall musculature in my system. Like when I finish a long run, my foot's tired. Like the muscles in my feet tired, the lower soleus muscles are tired, the peroneals are a little bit tired. Like I feel it more. Um, and from what I've heard and read about like the four percents and the next percents with a lot of uh, just reading online blogs, whatever, is people that have done half marathons and marathons in them, their quads get trashed. Really? They're saying the quads are absolutely destroyed by the end of it. I don't know if it's due to the steep angle, and, and now these yeah, these these yeah. it's changing their gait, and so it's forcing them into a different angle, and so they're just like the, the quads. Yeah, Other people, I've heard their hamstrings get strained, and I don't know maybe it depends that's, on how they run. I'm guessing it depends on how they run. I don't know. I didn't watch videos, but you know you're getting complaints. I haven't heard too much complaints of the calves yet, but they're probably out there. I just haven't read them. I assume there, there are. Uh, you almost have to do a long, longitudinal study on these people now. Like, yeah. Okay, well, you run faster, but what else happens? Mm -hmm. Probably. Did that go? It's good. Not too much kick, though. It's, it's no, mild. No, it's, it was good. Yeah, it was pretty mild. Yeah, not too bad. We still got lots of food here to eat, so yeah. you can put it on everything. Dip my french fries in it. What do you got planned for, say, the next spring? Like, are you going to do some races in them? Yeah, I got a few races. I got a couple 5, 10Ks back-to-back uh, -back that I'm probably going to do. All Undecided yet. All road races right now, yeah. It's just road season right now. Um, oh, yeah, I'd never wear a Vaporfly on a track. I, I don't, personally wouldn't. I'd stick to a, a racing flat or a spike. Way more response off the track with that stuff than I think you would out of a Vaporfly. You're only going to set yourself back if you want to be fast on the track. But you will still train in spikes on the track kind of thing? Yeah. And as I'm getting older, I'm actually spending less time in spikes anyway. I just find it's, it's hard on you. It's hard on you. Yeah, it is. When you're in your you know, late teens and early 20s, mid 20s, you can, you can trash your, your muscles pretty good and it no problem, recovers pretty quick. When I put spikes on, and again, I'm not running fast, but I'll say run 30 meters. It's like scary. It feels scary. It's like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> My, my legs are gonna get hit my body. Yeah. yeah, it's like trying to ride your bike. You're like, oh, I'm gonna ride my bike without my helmet today. Ah. <laughs> That's how it feels. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. No seat belts. Yeah. Oh. I'm a rebel today. Look at me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you get a new helmet, by the way? <laughs> Not yet. I haven't uh, gotten a new helmet yet. And for a little backstory on that, yes, earlier this year I had to stop running for a little bit because I did a header over my road bike. You're riding too fast, obviously. Yeah, I wish I could say that. <laughs> but think of that for triathlon. Now you can have a juiced up suit, and you can have a juiced up bike, and now you got juiced up shoes. That'll actually be really interesting to see uh, how these triathlon um, road runs go, the, the, the run portion of it. Yeah. I haven't even thought about that yet. They kind of have a different way of running, too. Yeah. You get the speed laces on the Vaporfly, it might not have as much 
It might almost be, the, the material might be too soft for that. Okay. Because it might have to be That's true. quite a bit tighter. I'm not sure, but you know, who knows? They can you need the them. Marty McFly boots. Yes, exactly. Just the, the self-tightening. Yeah, self-tightening. Which I think Nike did at one point anyway. <laughs> <They're quite> a, <laughs> um, I do like the, with the, pat, the board, the kickboard. Oh yeah, we used kickboard. Hey, oh, hey good. Oh, hey. How are you doing? Oh, sorry. How's the burger? How's the whole thing? Delicious. Oh yeah. First time. First time. First time. He just lives over there. That's all right. I had yeah, to bring yeah. him in. I had to drag oh, him in. You gotta be oh, this is this is a great. Beer. My my wife will love this burger too. The triple A homemade, triple A top solo. You know other, you can, I can tell you other places the burger they come come in all foods and patties. Mm -hmm. And this one, I do it myself. I know the quality. That's why. So you you finished already? Oh yeah yeah. This is my third time here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I just got back into running. Slowly started building up my volume again. And so then three years ago, I joined the VFAC running club because my wife was in it. She'd been dragging me, like harassing me for, I don't know, five years. I gotta come, gotta come train, gotta come train. I was like, nah, I'm just happy just running my own. I'm not trying to do anything special. Then I put into my own head that I could get under 34 minutes for 10K. Now you can get under 30, I think. Now you can do those shoes. I'll be doing like 29.50. That'd be awesome. Uh, We're gonna be tracking you, and we gotta get some sort of like wearables on you. Like I ended up buying this. It was a Garmin or a Polar, but apparently it has an accelerometer in there too. So you, it's just a chest strap, right? Mm -hmm. And so it'll measure sort of the vertical displacements and all that. So I'm curious. It was like a hundred bucks. I'm like, I'm gonna try it um, <clears throat> because I know, like you said, with the watch, it's sort of like you know how good is that algorithm when your arm's swinging? Yeah. But I guess there is. Your arm cadence does match your leg cadence, so Should, yeah. so we'll see. But I, I'm I'm curious to see what if that changes your. I don't know if you have any pre data, but certainly if that changes your frequency in those competition runs, that'd be interesting. Well, I have or all the data it, tracked from my watch, but it's or, nothing. Yeah, or or is it over years? Is it the same frequency like you said? And it's just now bigger stride length. Mm -hmm. um, that would be kind of cool to see. Yeah, that's why it's yeah. I'm, we can scrounge up that data and keep it moving. Well, they said the the fellow who broke the two hour, there was a stat on his his uh, his cadence. And I can't remember what it was, but it was about like it was just over 180 beat like beats per minute, right? That, so that's about the average like of three the, strides per second. That's about what they want. Any talk you talk to elite coaches and people like that, like the 180, 180, 180, 180. 180 that's what they try and get the majority of the population to be. as Where, close as you can to 180. Yeah. So like that three three strides per second, or you know, and then in sprinting it's usually like four and a half. So. Yeah. Which, which is interesting because it doesn't, I mean, I'm, you know, it's 50% more. I guess, it, I don't know if it's 50% faster, but certainly it's interesting. Uh. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 50% more is what's happening. Right, because if, if you're at 12 meters per second, yeah. well, I'll, I'll look into that. I'll crunch those numbers, but is it, it would be 8 meters per second, right? It would be, so that, that's, that's kind of interesting. It does kind of match up, so. So then, yeah, so then you think about if that, if the shoe can give you that much more stride, stride length. length in the same 180 frequency. Yeah. Then you don't really have to alter much, right? No. And that's what I mean, too. Maybe it does count down, down to form. Because yeah. if somebody now is pitched even far forward, normal, how is that going to change? And, you know, and if you can make through a race without getting injured, your quads cramp up, hamstrings, calves, because yeah. of the change of shoe. So yeah, let's let's track your progress over the next six months. Well, yeah, I'm really trying to hit <clears throat> my under 34 by April, so sun run. Yeah, I don't think that'll be a problem. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, we'll we'll track your progress and then um, we'll do like an update for people and just see where you're at. And then I'm sure by then you'll have accumulated another pair of shoes that we can look at as well. Well, if $300 or whatever I spent on those, they better last me a little bit. <laughs> Like, I don't know if I can afford to buy a pair. They should have interchangeable. Hey, they have like insoles. There's a company selling like carbon insoles too, I think. Really? Yeah, which I don't know if it's going to work quite the same. I don't know if that will work the same way. They kind of have theirs embedded in the... It's not positioned in the right place, yeah. yeah. But there is a company on... I see it on Facebook. It's, I can't remember what it's called, but... Oh, yeah, buy these insoles and it'll improve your vertical jump and all this. Like, 
Oh, great. It is pretty interesting, though, because there's been a bunch of shoes over time saying this will improve your speed, this and this. Finally, it does. Finally, there's a shoe that <laughs> seems like it is more than just a placebo effect, potentially, right? Like, is that, that good? good. Did that you like very that? Good. Very good. Lucky I did a big workout this morning. You can keep going. I gotta go run now. Good luck. Use the rest of that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.